Welcome to this lecture about early pregnancy failure, a simplified ultrasound approach. The goals and objective from this talk is to review the order of appearance in early pregnancy and to review the definitive and suspicious criteria for non-viable first trimester pregnancy. Before we go deep into the criteria for pregnancy failure, we will do a quick review of normal early pregnancy. So, here is the sequence of events in early pregnancy. On the image here in the left, we have a very small intrauterine fluid collection with rounded edges, and that is one of the earliest signs of intrauterine pregnancy. Next we have a sac that contains a yolk sac, and this occurs at five and a half weeks of pregnancy. And this is unequivocal sign of a pregnancy. Then an embryo appears at six weeks adjacent to the yolk sac. And usually we get a flicker of cardiac activity at this time. And then later on at seven weeks, we see an amnion surrounding the embryo. If we don't have a yolk sac within a gestational sac, there are other signs that we can use to diagnose an IUP. So, at four to five weeks it is normal to have an empty intrauterine sac. In the image on the left is showing intradecidual sign. The yellow arrow shows sac-like structure that is embedded eccentrically within one of the decidua, located adjacent to a collapsed endometrium. In the image on the right is showing a double decidual sac sign. Here is the yellow arrow is showing the outer ring, which is the decidua. Next to the inner ring, which is the chorion. Note that these signs are absent in 35% of intrauterine pregnancies. So keep that in mind. This is the order of appearance in early pregnancy. And that is what we are going to use as basis for pregnancy failure together with the timing. There are four definitive diagnostic criteria for intrauterine pregnancy failure. Two are size-based and two are time-based. Discriminatory crown rump length. This is the crown rump length size, above which, the absence of heart motion is unequivocal for failure. Old studies use 5 millimeters, however, these studies are small, and sensitivity is about 50%. More recent data suggest that heart motion may not be seen until 5 to 6 millimeters, with inter-observer variability about 15%. So, the most conservative scenario is, the upper normal crown rump length is 6 mm, plus 0.9 mm, which is the 15% inter-observer variability. The sum will be about 7 mm. So, this is the first definitive criteria for pregnancy failure, which is crown rump length of 7 mm or more without cardiac pulsations, with a 100% positive predictive value. As you can see on this image, there is an embryo measuring about 16 millimeters in crown rump length. However, there is no visible cardiac pulsations, denoting definitive pregnancy failure. Discriminatory mean sac diameter. This is the mean sac diameter size above which the absence of an embryo is unequivocal for failure. Some studies use 16 mm and others use 18 mm. However, these studies are small and sensitivity is about 50%. And more recent data suggest up to 21 mm with inter-observer variability about 19%. So, the most conservative scenario is, the upper normal mean sac diameter is 21 mm plus 4 mm, which is 19% the inter-observer variability. The sum will be 25 mm. So that, we came up with the second definitive criteria for pregnancy failure, which is a mean sac diameter of 25 mm or greater, and no visible embryo. With a 100% positive predictive value. 
As you can see on this image, the mean sac diameter is about 27 mm, with no visible embryo within the gestational sac. This indicates definitive early pregnancy failure. Time-based criteria for pregnancy failure. These are needed because discriminatory mean sac diameter or crown rump length may never be achieved. Based on timing of interval appearance, the gestational sac appears at 5 weeks. The yolk sac at 5 and half weeks. The embryo with heart motion seen at 6 weeks. With half week inter observer variability. And again let's do the conservative scenario. The earliest time you will see a gestational sac is 4 and half weeks, minus the latest normal embryo, which is 6 and half weeks. The difference is 2 weeks or 14 days. Again, the earliest time you will see a yolk sac is 5 weeks, minus the latest embryo seen at 6 and half weeks. The difference is 1 and half week or 11 days. So these are the third and fourth definitive criteria for early pregnancy failure in interval studies. Absence of embryo with heartbeat 14 days or greater, after a scan that showed a gestational sac without a yolk sac. Absence of embryo with heartbeat 11 days or greater, after a scan that showed a gestational sac with a yolk sac. Suspicious criteria for intrauterine pregnancy failure. There are eight criteria suspicious for intrauterine pregnancy failure. This also known as IUP of uncertain viability. These are listed here. The first suspicious criteria is a crown rump length less than 7 mm with no heart motion. You should never see embryo without heart motion, as the heart motion starts early even before you can see the embryo definitely. If you see an embryo without heart motion, that is suspicious for pregnancy failure. As you can see on the image, the crown rump length is 4 mm, however no visible cardiac pulsations. This is suspicious for pregnancy failure and follow-up ultrasound study is highly recommended. Note that any embryo without heart motion is suspicious. The second suspicious criteria is a mean sac diameter of 16 to 24 millimeters and no visible embryo. As you can see the mean sac diameter is slightly less than 25 millimeters. This is the number used as discriminatory size diagnostic for failure. As you can see on the image, the mean sac diameter is 22 millimeters, however there is no visible embryo. This is suspicious for pregnancy failure and follow-up ultrasound study is highly recommended. Note that first and second criteria are slightly less than the discriminatory size diagnostic for failure. The third and fourth criteria are similar to the definitive criteria but less than 14 and 11 days. Absence of embryo with heart motion, 7 to 13 days, after a scan showed gestational sac without yolk sac. Absence of embryo with heart motion, 7 to 10 days, after a scan showed gestational sac with yolk sac. Note that the time intervals are slightly less than time intervals required for definitive diagnosis of failure. The fifth suspicious criteria is empty amnion sign. It is sonographic visualization of the amnion adjacent to the yolk sac, with no visible embryo. As you can see on this image, here there is the yolk sac. Here is the amnion, but where is the embryo? That is not the order that's supposed to appear, the embryo has to appear first. This is suspicious for pregnancy failure, and follow-up ultrasound study is recommended. The sixth suspicious criteria is enlarged yolk sac, greater than 7 millimeters. 
the normal yolk sac is less than 6 mm. If the yolk sac is 7 mm or more, that is suspicious for pregnancy failure. As you can see on this image, the yolk sac measuring about 8 mm. This is abnormally enlarged yolk sac and suspicious for pregnancy failure. Follow-up ultrasound study is recommended. The seventh suspicious criteria is small gestational sac in relation to size of the embryo. If the mean sac diameter minus crown rump length is less than 5 mm, this is abnormal. And sometimes this is called first trimester oligohydramnios. As you can see on this image, the mean sac diameter is 14 mm and crown rump length is 12 mm. The difference between the two measurements is 2 mm. This is abnormal and suspicious for pregnancy failure. And follow-up ultrasound study is recommended. The eighth suspicious criteria is absence of embryo six weeks or more after the last normal menstrual period. So, we see here that is supposed to be six weeks and five days according to her last menstrual period. But there is no embryo seen. But caution should be taken when using this criteria, because a lot of women do not have regular cycle. So, this would only consider if a reliable history with very regular cycles, or pregnant by assisted reproductive techniques. To take home message, understanding the order of appearance in early pregnancy is essential for diagnosis of intrauterine pregnancy failure. There are four definitive diagnostic criteria for intrauterine pregnancy failure. Two are size-based and two are time-based. There are eight suspicious diagnostic criteria for intrauterine pregnancy failure. Absent cardiac activity by certain crown rump length. Absent embryo by certain mean sac diameter. Absent embryo by certain point of time. An abnormal morphology of the gestational sac, amnion, and yolk sac. When there are findings suspicious for pregnancy failure, follow-up ultrasound at 7 to 10 days is generally appropriate.